Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. This one is another challenge piece, which means the brigade in my online kit community voted for the theme Christmas Nostalgia. I make a tutorial based on that theme and they also create some pieces to be voted for at the end of this video. So stick around and make sure you leave your favorite in the comments below. So firstly, I'm not actually starting with a cake. I'm starting with a rocky road in the shape of a cake. The recipe for this will be up on YouTube next week, so I will leave it linked below. It's a festive version that has been fully devoured ever since. Here I've got my bowl of pink ganache. I also have a separate tutorial on this that you can watch and I'll leave that one linked below. It's just regular white ganache with some colouring added. And then I'm adding my outer layer just like I would if it was a real cake. I've then got my trusty Pro Froster, which you can create a clean top and sides all in one go. And I like to go around and get the initial shape first and then leave that layer to firm up before then adding extra layers. You can see we're getting cleaner sides and top already. Then once that's set, I'm going in with my second coat and you'll see it's starting to look a bit more like an actual cake. As this is the outer finish and there's not going to be any sugar paste on it, I want to smooth it out a little bit further with a metal scraper. Then you can just take off any excess from the top. I don't need this to be super perfect as we are going to be covering this in a heck of a lot of piping, so I'm just going to stop here. I'm then measuring the circumference of the cake and then dividing that number by five to create five swags. So I'm just going around poking holes according to my measurements so they're all equally spaced apart. I've then grabbed a cutter which is closest to that size and placing a piece of masking tape across the centre to create a straight line. This is just a fast way to line up the masking tape with the top of the cake and rock that cutter between the two holes that you've made. This will create an even equal swag all the way around. Now we're just going to move on to some of the details. I have these little round Christmas pudding chocolates. You can of course use those lint balls or even Maltesers. And I'm just popping them in a bowl with some Moroccan velvet luster. This is like a pinky slash red shimmer, which I'm just tipping on top and I'm taking a fluffy brush to swirl those chocolates in the dust. It takes no time at all to cover them. You can of course use any colour you fancy, it works well with gold too. For the topper, I've just grabbed this debosser, which means that when you finish, the letters actually stick out of the paste rather than press in. You can pick these up from all over the place, but I do love browsing Etsy for some more unique ones. I've then just dusted it with icing sugar, rolled over my paste so it pushes the letters inside. And you can see how it finally looks here. I'm then just cutting it out with a round cutter and not to waste any of that leftover pink dust, we're adding a little bit of lemon extract to it to create a paint and gently going over the letters with a fine paintbrush. This can take a while, so just be patient. Again, feel free to use whatever colors you prefer. We're then popping that plaque on top of the cake and now I'm doing something I don't actually enjoy doing and that's piping. Me and piping have never ever got on but in this bag I have some dark green buttercream with just a round nozzle on the end and I'm attempting to pipe on my first swag and here you'll see my instant mistake. I was treating it like royal icing because that's what I used to pipe with before and I was expecting a long string to come out and nicely droop that I could just then attach to the cake. But of course, this is buttercream and it doesn't work in the same way. I make a right mess of this as I try to scrape it back off and I'm just making it worse. But luckily, this is having a lot of piping on it and it's only for us to eat, so I wasn't too bothered. You'll see my really bad piping here, but I thought it would be good to show you something that I'm really not good at. <laughs> so you're pretty much just watching a beginner creating this cake. This is my first Lambeth cake. 
Whilst I have that same nozzle on, I'm just piping some dots around the plaque. I've then switched out for some berry coloured buttercream with a different nozzle and I'm piping some sort of shell around the base again. The only nozzles I have are actually hand-me-downs and I use them for either texturing sugar paste or cutting out small circles. <laughs> they don't actually get piped with very often. This type of cake is really popular at the moment and it's a current trend. However, do be prepared to mix up a lot of buttercream in different colours and constantly having to wash out and choose different nozzles and bags for all the different designs you're going to add. That's why I'm trying to pipe on as much as I can with one nozzle before moving to the next. Yes, they look pretty and they look nice, but they are a little bit of a nightmare to make, especially if you use more colours and more nozzles. I'm now just wanting to fill the gap, so I'm starting to pipe on green swirls and I'm adding my large dusted balls to the top. This cake was actually designed to look very different for this challenge, but I was running out of time and I was just quickly wanting to get this finished. I then abandoned all my plans and just started sticking piping everywhere. I've no idea what I'm doing here, I'm just filling gaps with the different colours and nozzles just to get it finished. But you are watching a complete beginner at this as I've never done a Lambeth cake before. This is my very first one. I was in a rush, but I don't think it turned out too bad. And here is the finished thing. It looks so much like a little Christmas cake. However, the insides will probably last much longer with it being Rocky Road. And I can tell you the whole thing has already disappeared because we couldn't stop eating it. Please do check out the actual recipe for this festive rocky road when it's uploaded because the insides are a yummy mix of marshmallows, biscuits, cranberries and rum. This actually makes a great gift as well for families as it lasts longer than cake and the recipients will be able to share it with their guests and eat it for weeks. But here is my Christmas nostalgia bringing a bit of that vintage charm. Now stick around to watch all the Brigadier's pieces that they've put together of what reminds them of their nostalgic Christmas. Please vote for your favourite in the comments below because they do win a little prize and if you want to join us on the next one you can join the Brigade in the links below. Thanks guys, see you next time.